Now at 530, after ignoring the issue for years, the Florida legislature began to address the mental health crisis and the criminal justice system. Good evening, I'm Nasha Sherman. And I'm Elliot Rodriguez in for Jim Barry at 530. This is an issue we've been focusing on here at CBS News Miami and following our documentary last year, Warehouse, The Life and Death of Tristan Murphy, there was a renewed sense of urgency among lawmakers. CBS News Miami's Jim Defiti looks at what lawmakers passed and what still needs to be done. Well, certainly there wasn't as much accomplished as I would have liked, um, but I have really big goals. I mean, I think the whole system needs to be fundamentally changed and that's not gonna happen overnight. Cindy Murphy offering her take on the legislative session that ended last week. Murphy went to Tallahassee to plead for those changes following the death of her son, Tristan, a diagnosed schizophrenic who killed himself with a chainsaw inside a state prison that had failed to provide him the necessary treatment. You know, when I went up to Tallahassee at first, I didn't think that there was going to be anything much accomplished. I'd been told that legislatures weren't, weren't really interested in mental health issues, particularly when they were linked to the criminal justice system. But I found just the opposite when I went up there. I found a lot of very caring, compassionate people, the very passionate people who really care about these issues and care about change. The biggest change this year was a reform to the state's Baker Act, the law that allows police and family members to involuntarily commit a person to a psychiatric facility for 72 hours if they pose an imminent threat to themselves or others. However, the law doesn't provide much help when that 72 hours comes to an end, but a measure passed this year by the legislature requires the type of follow-up care that had been missing. It was a very good step in the right direction. Uh, I particularly like the idea that there's required handoffs and treatment for people coming out of that system. Right now, most people just get dropped, and that's part of the problem. Judge Steve Leifman, who has pioneered the use of mental health courts around the country, said he has been trying to make these changes for more than a decade. I'm encouraged. It was a, it was a good session. The best one I've seen in about 15 years for these issues, and the first one in 60 years since the Baker Act was written um, to move uh, that system uh, forward. There was also increased funding for the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline here in Florida, but the legislature once again refused to expand Medicaid, which would provide mental health coverage for nearly a million Floridians. I hate that this is a political issue because it shouldn't be. It should be what's in the best interest of our state and what's in the best interest of the individuals in our state. For Cindy Murphy, it's been three years since Tristan died. And as she now raises his two sons, Cody 16 and Colton eight, she admits there are days when she wonders if she should just focus her attention on those boys. But as Colton gets older and starts to ask her questions, she wants to be able to tell him she did everything she could. If this can be a catalyst for change, if we can use this to change the system so that they can understand that, that Tristan's life had meaning and um, accomplished something for other people, then, then yeah, I think I still need to keep battling it for, for those reasons. And, and, and just, I don't want anybody else to go through this. I mean, if we can, if, if my voice can create change, then I need to keep using my voice no matter how hard it is. Cindy Murphy already is meeting with legislators in her area to start planning for next year's session. Jim, one of the takeaways that I got from watching your documentary is that Miami Day does a much better job dealing with mentally ill defendants than the rest of the state. Is the rest of the state uh, upping its game? The, the, some areas are. We're seeing it in Jacksonville, in the Orlando area, little bits here and there. But one of the things that uh, Judge Leifman has been advocating for is to try to legislatively move this forward throughout the entire state. So that, And one of the things he's asked for is to try to create a summit in which the Chief Justice of the State Supreme Court, the governor, and legislative leaders would meet to discuss how to bring this mental health court into a much greater extent across the state of Florida. But pretty incredible. I mean, you hear his mother speak. She's raising Tristan's two, two, two children and then facing what seems like an incredible inherent barrier, but actually making some progress. She is making progress. The, the hard part is for her is that, you know, at, at what point does she think that 
that she needs to put this aside, worry about herself, worry about the boys, but she really is driven by the notion of wanting to help others and see that this doesn't happen again, and that's what drives her. But she recently told me, and I'll share this, that she started in a grief counseling group mm. inside her church. She had been reluctant to do that before, and, and she's getting the help she needs, and that's important. People need to take care of themselves as well. Completely understandable. Yeah. Yeah, Jim. and we want to remind people, because both Elliot and I have watched that documentary, it is simply extraordinary, yes. Jim. And you still can see it. You can see all of Tristan Murphy's story on the CBS News Miami documentary, Warehoused, The Life and Death of Tristan Murphy. You can find it on CBSMiami.com.